So as I was uh, about to record this video, I decided to search Google for headline formulas, just the keywords headline formulas, right? And uh, I, I hit results like this, 51 headline formulas to skyrocket conversions, 30 plus ultimate headline formulas for tweets, posts, and emails, headlines that work, 10 surefire templates to try, right? Headline formulas, everybody loves headline formulas. You get into copywriting, you're like, oh, sweet, there's headline formulas out there that I can use, awesome, right? Um, yeah, maybe, but no. Uh, there's actually a big problem, actually three big problems with headline formulas. Um, and I want to share them with you. Now, this comes from over 15 years as a professional copywriter and marketer. And my experience um, that you, it's okay to learn headline formulas in the beginning, but you want to move past them quickly. And I did not get big results with my copywriting until I learned to think well beyond the headline formulas. Um, so let's, let's talk about the three big problems. Number one, the first big problem with, a, with headline formulas is that they were written for someone else's ad. They weren't written for your ad ad. They were written for somebody else's market, somebody else's context, somebody else's time. Like a headline formula written for 19, for the 1950s, the entire cultural context, the entire technological context, the entire media context of all of that is dramatically different than anything that you're going to see today. They were written also for somebody else's idea. Like you may have heard of big idea copywriting, right? Well, your headline needs to be written for your big idea, not for somebody else's big idea. And so if you're starting with the formula, um, you are inherently limiting yourself to somebody else's idea. They're also written for somebody else's product or service. So uh, what may be a fit for their product or service, like you go down this list of headline formulas, and if you're just trying to adapt your message to these headline formulas that already exist, they may not be right for your product or service. Um, the second big problem with headline formulas is the whole issue of overuse. Now, as a copywriter, if you p start paying attention to this, you'll probably find two or three or five or just one um, of these headline formulas that really bug you because every time you see it, you just feel uh, like a turning in your gut. For me, it's a who else headline. Like who else wants to write awesome headlines, right? Uh, to me, that is like the most ridiculous headline formula. And I know that other uh, that other top copywriters have used it in like successful ads, successful promotions. But to me, like that language, who else, to, it just doesn't resonate. And it just jumps out at like, who else wants to write me too headlines? Who else wants to write headlines that sound just like everybody else's? And one of the big things with marketing is you want to stand out. And so writing a headline that sounds just like everybody else's is a surefire way to end up sound like not standing out, right? One of the best ways, one of the one of the reasons that um, like certain ads really work and others don't is that those ads stand out and jump out in some way. They're they're innovative, they're new, they take a brand new approach, they feel different, such that they buy that extra moment of attention that it takes to engage with prospects and pull them into the advertising. The other thing is a lot of headline formulas are full of power words and the latest research, I'll include um, a, a link to my video on this, the latest research is really suggesting that classic power words of direct marketing, direct response are actually like uh, penalizing your ads, like your ads are being penalized by using power words, um, meaning that people are less likely to click, less likely to engage if your ad has power words in it. That people have just been flagged to this, this idea that, okay, this word means ad. And because copywriters overused it so much, I don't want to engage with that, that word. And so I won't engage with the ad. And so I won't click. And so I won't make a purchase. And, um, and so overuse of headline formulas is going to lead to them becoming less effective. Uh, when, when things feel 
novel and different, people engage with them when things feel the same and um, like, oh, I've already seen that or I know what they're trying to do to me. People don't engage. People like actively resist that. So overuse is the, is the second big problem with headline formulas. And the third big problem with headline formulas is you don't necessarily know what to say next. They don't necessarily set you up for what to say next. And so you could sit down and actually I have a stack of note cards. I should have grabbed it before recording this. Um, I've shown it in other videos. I have this stack of note cards where I copied all of these different headline formulas on to the note cards to like internalize it, right? Uh, but at the same time, I can, I can sit down and I can crank out a whole bunch of these note cards and uh, or a, a whole bunch of headlines based on these note cards. And uh, even once I pick the best headline, like that doesn't guarantee the sale. Headline, Your headline might get the most readership and all sorts of stats have been thrown around through time. David Ogilvie said, um, your headline is read by 10 times as many people as your ad. But ultimately, it's not the headline that closes the sale. The headline gets readership, but it does not close the sale. And so if you don't know what to say next, and after that, and after that, and like if you don't understand the deep structure of building out an advertisement that actually is then able to uh, convert attention into interest and desire in and for your product, and then action in the form of an order or purchase of your product or service, if you don't know how to do that, if you don't know what to say next after this headline formula, Becoming overly reliant on the headline formulas and using them as a crutch is going to make you a less effective copywriter. Um, and and actually, like I have just shared my story. I've just written out my story about how I finally learned to write long copy that sells. And I'll make sure that I include a link in uh, in the description with this video because that goes. It goes deep into what's important beyond the superficial details like oh, the, the headline formula that you use. Um, and so recapping, the number one problem that I shared uh, with, with headline formulas is that they're written for somebody else's ad. And so you know, a great co a copywriter will sit down and they will say, like, what is going on right now? in my prospect's life, in the world at large, in my market, and how can I speak to that? And then when somebody sees that that ad was successful and they try to copy it, they're copying things that worked with that copywriter speaking to that prospect in that market in that time. So they're written for someone else's ad. They, they lead to overuse, like reliance on headline formulas leads to overuse. And uh, you've heard of things like banner blindness. Well, the same thing applies for copy. There's language blindness. There's, there's language resistance in terms of if you overuse uh, certain words, people are less likely to engage. And then uh, the third big problem that I listed is not necessarily knowing what to say next. So you have to understand the deep structure of ads based on the types of big idea that you use and, and really make sure that the entire message is, um, is structured in a way that moves people from attention through interest and desire into action. Right. And that's how you write effective copy. And in fact, a lot of great copywriters that I know, they don't even write the headline until after they've written the entire sales letter landing page, video sales letter script, whatever. And a lot of times, like I'll come back around and I will have written a headline in the beginning, but I'll write a different one or we'll test a few different headlines. And almost never do I actually use the headline formula itself. I do, I have internalized though, I'll, I will say, I have internalized the language of headlines and I've internalized the structure and the psychology of headlines because um, being able to pull from that and then completely write in my own words, and maybe occasionally there will be things that slip in that feel a little bit like formulas, like the problem with headline formulas does feel a little bit like a headline formula, right? But it slips in not based on wanting to write a headline that's going to get clicked based on formulas, right? But it slips in because the whole idea behind this piece of content is the problem with headline formulas. And so that makes sense as a headline for this content. And it is a, uh, it's a concise, clear way to 
capture that big idea of this content. And so it makes sense to use that in this context. So again, I'm not completely above using headlines and headline formulas and things that feel like they are um, similar to what's come before me. And actually that's, you know, we're all standing on the shoulders of giants here. But you have to recognize that, that they come after. They don't come before the idea. They don't come before the selling structure and selling message. They come after. And then maybe they work because you have internalized them into your language. So uh, what do you think? Am I completely wrong here? Have you written huge controls that just copied somebody's headline formula? Like, have you had big success using headline formulas? Or uh, does your experience bear this out? You know, feel free to leave a comment, share your thoughts on this, your insights, your perspective, your reflections on it. Also, make sure that you like this video if you feel that it was valuable uh, so that the magical algorithms of the internet We'll share it with other people like you. You can also share it with people who you think might find it valuable. And if you're not yet subscribed, you can uh, subscribe here. You can follow me here. And you can go to BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com where you can get my daily emails Monday through Friday uh, covering content on copywriting, marketing, selling, business building, direct response, uh, personal development, and more. And also make sure to check out that link in the description to um, how I learned to write long copy that sells uh, because... That is really like the holy grail of copywriting to be able to write consistently uh, high converting copy to the point where it's always making your clients a profit. When I learned how to do that, I basically, uh, <laughs> I had all the client work that I could handle and I was able to grow my own business by writing copy. So lots of good stuff in the description. Be sure to check out those links. Again, I'm Roy Fur. This has been a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets and I look forward to seeing you again in your next video. I'll see you soon. Bye.